Pass to Howell, right circle, loading up. Waiting, centers it in front, loose puck, and a shot scores! Ty Spencer! Here's Chance, floats it forward. Howe over the Spokane line at the left side, drives it into the corner. Shrugs off the check behind the net, up top. Shot Chance, deflected right, rebound scores! Braxton Whitehead! Now a loose puck comes into the spot, Moret down low, streak and foot shoots, what a save by Huey! With the right pad, he was down and out, and he walked on the streak! Marvin Vaughn in the center, and over the attacking line for the pads, back in for the cross for the slot area, Bushamansky back here in her front, centers it across, they score! Braden Barnett in his 100th career game in the Western Hockey League. Slaney over the blue line, in front for Wilson, loads to Aremba, he shoots, he scores! Sam Aremba gets the milestone with his 20th of the season. Welcome to Pat's Cast, the unofficial Regina Pat's podcast. It's February 24th, it's episode 166. It's Chris here, Kevin there. How are we doing tonight, Kev? Um, it would have been nice if the Pats could have picked up a, at least a point or two in these first two games in the States, but um, yeah, it hasn't looked great. It hasn't looked bad, but it hasn't looked great. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, not, a, not a good way to start a six-game U.S. trip, especially when two of the, the two of the bigger games are at the end. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Like we said last week, it was... Uh, it's gonna be tough to pick up points at the back end. You have you have to jump on these games at the at the front end and uh, we've come up short both nights here. So yeah, it was it was kind of tough, but I guess uh, no beating around the bush. We'll just get right into it. Um, Spokane, like you jump out to two nothing lead, and then it just kind of <laughs> went downhill from there. I think I think that second goal, the tying goal, kind of started the uh, it ki- kind of, sort of, kind of, yeah. sort of. And then but the third, the third just... Because in the second period, the shots were even. Like, oh, the Pats actually shot them 7-6. But then 16 seconds to the third. Yeah. The major. <laughs> it's unfortunate. It was there, I guess. Like, I, 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 yeah, it was there, but... It was it was a penalty, for sure. It was a penalty, and then it just kind of, the wheels literally fell off after that. Yeah, you, you get lucky. They pick up a two minute minor for. I mean, it should have been instigating. Should have been two and ten, but for just, sure. <laughs> but it was just unsportsmanlike conduct. So I don't know why that was the call. But uh, so that that kills two year five minutes on the on the PK. But and you only give up one on the PK. I mean, that's not. But still, like you, you got to kill that penalty with those. With the yeah, you just just takes yeah. any kind of potential momentum away and. They couldn't. They couldn't get back. They couldn't get back into the game. Really. Yeah, I know. Like you, you have four shots that whole period in the third period. Like it's, it's not, not how, how you win a game, right? You're only. Yeah. You give up that goal. You're only down. It's only three two. You're only down one. Yeah. But it just, it just seemed like there was nothing. Yeah, they lost. They lost the mojo. They lost the momentum. The momentum. They, well, yeah. Vaughn is a top six forward. He's he's one of the he's one of the more key guys, and losing him. It, it it hurt. Like yeah. I, I know Brad shortens the bench quite often, and like you don't see a lot of the younger guys in pivotal parts of the games at times. But losing him, that really that really changed everything. They changed the whole complexion of the the top the top nine for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. He he's got all he brings that energy, right? Like he is on that on that edge on that line, but. Unfortunately, he on that over. he's 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 he crosses. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, he does cross over a little too often. Both of them are a little bit too aggressive sometimes, but yeah, that it, it is what it is. You can't really, yeah, you can't really tell them not to do it because if they not if they don't do it, then what good That's are not their game? The guys right. that are the, the the hitter type guys like the Vaughns and like Wilson and Peskin and those guys, if they don't hit, like. They need yeah. to bring that to the game. Definitely, for sure. And unfortunately, it's probably going to be a, a lengthy suspension. Um, his last suspension was, um, well, only two games, but that was just for the 
game misconduct. Um, but going back to last year, his last suspension was five games on a on a So he's shot. a repeat, repeat, a repeat, yeah, repeat yeah. offender. So yeah, I, it'll be I a few. It's not going to be less than five, I wouldn't think. Probably it'll be five or more. I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. that's just yeah, just for sure. So and the the guy looked like he didn't come back the rest of the game. So okay, yeah, I I didn't notice either way there. So well, um, you can't really tell from the the, the streams, but. Dante never mentioned his name again. Yeah. After that, so. I mean, you can just go to see if he played tonight. Um, but yeah, and then it just it was just unfortunate that uh, you just had nothing at the at the end of the game there, right? So. Yeah, just ran out ran out of steam. Yeah, what was his name? Do you recall it? Erasmus Ekstrom. He didn't play tonight. Yeah, no, not on the sheet tonight. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, I don't know. You know what? One thing from the game, man. There was energy in that building. There's over ten thousand people at that game. Like, uh, not not bad for eighth place team. Like, I, that's that's wild. Yes, and it was very loud, and the the audio feed on WHL Live was not great. It was, it was kind terrible. of terrible. It was it was actually really bad. <laughs> for the home for time, side, even the home side wasn't good. Yeah, I, I I flipped it over for a couple minutes or whatever, and yeah, it was not good. Just the audio quality was just all over the place. I don't know if they're, I don't know what <laughs> what the problem was, but man, it was it was crackling and. Yeah. yeah, I mean it was fine tonight. So, it was really good tonight. Yeah. Um. Actually, one key thing, the Pats had a five on three full two minutes, and we kind of talked about that. You know, there was there's a delayed penalty. And the Pats were cycling around, and and I don't know who was in front, but they took a pretty nasty cross check. And a lot, most of the time, you don't see that that called to give a team, you know, the five on a three, full, a full five on three. Yeah, yeah, you don't see that often at all. And it was just kind of like, oh, it's kind of refreshing because guys seem to take liberties, you know, sometimes. Um, on a delayed penalty, they they think they can get away with whatever because oh the ref's not going to call a second penalty here, right? Like, yeah. So that's kind of a little refreshing. I mean, sometimes it's not a penalty; guys just get pushed down. But you know, lots of times there's some some pretty good cross checks in front of the net, and it was interesting. But yeah, the Pats couldn't uh, capitalize on that key situation there, right? Yeah. So as hot as the power play has been lately, it just couldn't get one there. Yeah, 33, 33% over the last eight games was pretty good. Yeah, they've got one every game, I think, five or six now in a row. Yeah, eight games in a row. Eight, there you go. Yeah, it's for the power play going eight games Eight, now. okay. Yeah, another one tonight as well. Yeah, so that's, that's the eight games. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, yeah, because this is one of the games you had to have on this road trip. But, yeah, I guess going into tonight's game, Going to Kennewick, um, the audio was good, but the the visual wasn't quite as good. Um, no, the camera was a little further away. The ice was pink. Uh, Tri Cities jerseys were pink with white little numbers. Light, light or psychedelic light pink with white numbers, and the Pats blue jerseys with dark red numbers are hard to tell who's who from the cameras. Yeah, so it was kind of it was kind of a tough watch, but I mean, it is what it is. Um, you can see the play, you can see the players yeah. perfectly fine, but I, half the time you couldn't tell who's who. Yeah, the details. Yep, the details was, were really bad. It was <laughs> a little a little tough, but uh, I mean, it wasn't a bad game. Like no, it was it was decent. You 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 the opposite of. Of Friday night, right? You, you get the two goals. Here, you you give up the two goals. Um, but Ty Spencer, like he's still hot. He gets yep. one late. That's huge. You know, get one in the final minute on the power play. Uh, again, there was that one was kind of an interesting situation. I had no idea why it was a four minute power play. And then on the on the score sheet here, they had a hooking and a yeah. board. I think I don't know which one happened first. I think maybe the boarding. And then maybe the hooking after. So, but the same guy got two penalties. So it was kind of interesting. Yeah. But like I see the hit. The, 
they might have put them in wrong too in the the, the, the summer. Yeah, who knows? But you know, there was there was a hit there. Somebody hit somebody. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> apparently, there was a hooking. One of their guys hit one of our guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, you get that one right at the end of the period, and then you get the that was a minute plus to start the second period but there wasn't anything happening on that one no but uh uh you know this game they they you know lineup changed up obviously a couple guys out a couple guys in pine in he hasn't played a ton lately and you know he didn't play bad at all um you know he, he held them in there um but i think this is more of a game of what the Pats couldn't do, they just couldn't score. Like, yeah, yeah, sure, they they scored three goals tonight, but they had lots of opportunities. Like that third period, there was plenty. Um, a Remba fanned on a wide open net, and then they come back and fan scores. Yeah, <laughs> to make that that was kind of the backbreaker there for two. Oh, with oh yeah, oh. like five minutes to go. Pine makes like, a- Pine makes a huge glove save. Puck pops up to no man's land, and it ends up a fan stick, and he scores. It's yeah, like, was, ah, yeah. Somebody swatted it, kind of tried to get it out, but it, he just shot it from. He he knocks it down from the point, and he just shoots it. And and Pine was. It seemed like he was kind of ready for it, but it just. I think there was just a bunch of traffic in front, and it just. Yeah, traffic. I don't know if he was one hundred percent set or what. Yeah, it was just. It was weird. Yeah, no, it was unfortunate, right? Because you go from scoring a goal to not scoring to giving up one. Yeah, exactly. Right. I think that's the that's the tying goal right there that was on his stick or possibly on his stick and and wasn't. I mean, Slaney got robbed earlier. Um I think that was on the delayed power play I think they had. And yes, it was. For some reason these American teams don't like to show replays much at all. Not really, no. It's unfortunate. <laughs> or, like, or parts parts of replays. We want to see the whole replay, but they won't show the whole replay. Yeah. Like on that play, they showed the replay of Gibson trying to keep it in at the point and it gets deflected up over the glass and the guys run yeah. into each other. Yeah. No, I want to see the save that your goalie just made. That was quite possibly a great save, right? Yes, exactly. Or it's showing a... the replay of a post or the puck hitting the crossbar three times. Nothing else. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you go to that one. Uh, Whitehead just rings it right off the crossbar. Dante is like, it was in. I'm I sure it was in. Yeah. <laughs> but it clearly wasn't. And then the rebound was right there, and I don't know who was on the doorstep, and they just couldn't get their stick on it to jam it home. I mean, Well, on that shot, there was a broken stick blade, it looked like, that it went into the net. So maybe that is what oh, threw Dante I didn't even off. notice that. Okay. Yeah, it looked like there was like, like a piece of white. Like I, I think it was a stick blade. It went in. Oh, okay. It went along the bung. I don't know if it was along the bottom of the ice, or the, the ice or whatever, but it looked like it went in, and you could see something a rip, ripple of the net, but oh, definitely okay. wasn't the puck. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. Dante said he could see the net. He thought he seen the mesh ripple, and so I didn't see that. So uh, okay, that's that's fair. But yeah, I know that would have that would have tied it up. Um, but yeah, Aremba gets a little little redemption. He does score a goal after having that great opportunity. To, to give them that chance for Whitehead to to tie up the game and but it yeah. wasn't to be tonight unfortunately and then Tri City scores an empty netter to steal the deal the Pats they were they were doing really good in the faceoffs and then they just lost the faceoff in the third period they went down and scored yeah I mean they had lots of chances with the with Pine on the bench like there was yeah. you know there was there it was there can't, it's, can't take anything away from Mateka he played really well he made some really yeah. good saves. Definitely, and you, know, you can't say much. All oh, the Pats didn't do this or didn't do that. They, they, they had the opportunities. They just couldn't just put it in right. Like it's not like there was no. I don't want to say there was no effort on Friday, but like there was desperation in their game tonight. It was and, a, it was a different different play. You could tell it was totally different the way yeah, yeah. the way Fridays ended compared to tonight. Yeah, it was totally sure. different. Definitely. Um, if they would have played like they did tonight on Friday. The whole game, who knows? It might yeah. have been a different story. Yeah, it's tough to say. But I mean, if they would have played like they did against Calgary, they would have won both <laughs> these games, right? Exactly. But yep. they just can't find that kind of consistency. Yeah. But I the, mean, the, that, Jack, the Jekyll and Hyde Pats. I mean, that is what happens when you are, uh, 
you know, a team further down the standings, you don't have that consistency. That's why you're down at the bottom, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just it's just too bad to see because we see that great game they had against Calgary, and then you know, a not so great first game, and then an, a decent second game. But you know, you gotta have good games to beat these teams. It's only gonna get tougher. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, anything else for those games? Uh, congratulations to Braden Barnett on reaching 100 games. Scoring, scoring the Pat's second goal tonight. Got a hundred to his hundredth game. Congratulations. Yeah. Spencer Congratulations to Sam Aremba hitting hitting his twentieth goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, for sure. That's it sounds like Barnett was pretty pumped about scoring or uh getting his hundredth game and then he scores in it too, so Yep. That was uh that was nice to see. Um yeah, uh, one one player I do want to point out tonight was Allman. I mean, you couldn't see a lot who was who, but he he had two really good opportunities. He had a nice setup as well. Um, you know, it was basically just listening to the game kind of <laughs> kind of thing. But um, watching, listening for names, trying to yeah, yeah. trying to hear Dante call the names. Okay, that's Allman. Okay, that's okay. Mushamansky. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he had a nice assist, Mushamansky, right? Yeah. And Allman, yep. I thought, had a good game. Um, From what we could tell, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. He had two really good opportunities, um, stuff like that. So, yeah, I think these young guys got to play. You know, you, you notice Temple out there. You know, he heard his name quite a bit. So, um, but, yeah, no, uh, it's it, it's tough just, yeah, just to lose this one, especially this one. Yep. It was tough, but. Time is yeah. running out. Yeah, it's getting it's getting tough. Um, I don't know what else happened tonight. Like uh, PA one, PA one. Yeah, okay, they're really moving up. Um, so yeah, the Pats are. It's the only game that really matters to the Pats. Yeah, so they're seven behind Lethbridge, eight behind PA, and of course they're still six behind Calgary. But they got to jump Calgary, catch one of those other two. Yep. So it's getting slim. I mean, you, you look at the the schedule ahead, and you you get Seattle like this. Like, if you don't win in Seattle, you might not win on this road trip. Um, this, this team has won five road games all year. So yeah, I mean, would it be a surprise if they go winless? Uh, a little I, bit. I hope not. No, I, I, it, I don't want to see that. But I mean, but after losing the first two and losing Vaughn. And Barsic is sick now. I guess yeah. He's, he was yeah, out with illness. illness. Yeah, like this, is just they're starting to get down to numbers. They have so many guys that could be back and that aren't quite back. Like Butchkowski could be back soon, maybe. Um, they say Moore's day to day, so who knows what what his status is? They could use they could have used him in the lineup tonight. Yeah, definitely. Um... I mean it, but it is what it is. Like you just got to run with, run with who you got. I know they brought Kuzma along. I don't know does he get some action here. We'll see what happens. But I mean the young guys, you know, by all accounts look good tonight. You know, ish. So I don't know if he draws in at at some point. But I mean, barring another injury or, or such. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I said, you got Seattle on Tuesday. Like if if you don't get this game, I mean. Seattle's at the basically at the bottom, um, because then you roll into Wenatchee the next night, and yeah, they've been down lately, but they kind of ran through the Alberta here. Um, maybe they're a little tired. You can catch them, um, uh, you know, catch them a bit here. Uh, I think they beat Red Deer tonight. Yeah, they beat Red Deer. So, you know, that's, that's they're they're up and down. They're yeah, they're, they're a question mark. They like, do I mean, score some goals. They allow some goals. They've won some games with all their key guys. So, yeah, I mean, going into Red Deer isn't uh, isn't an easy feat, especially when if your team's up and down. I guess they didn't run through Alberta. They only did two games. They just did Red Deer and Calgary. So, oh, they're doing Edmonton. Sorry, on Sunday they're doing a a three and three, and then they're back home for Regina and Moose to come in. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, so they're up and down. So, I mean, you got to get Seattle. You got to get Seattle. Uh, you can, you, maybe you can get something off Wenatchee because then you roll into Portland and Everton there. Those two teams are really rolling right now. Yep. Um, they're the two kind of heavy hitters with Prince George in the West. Um, Portland seven and three in the last ten. Everett six three and one. Um, so yeah, that's that's going to be a tall ask to get. Especially anything. especially playing four games in five nights. Yeah, those last two are going to be tough. No That'll matter who be you're playing. That is going to be rough. Yeah, like I said, it's it's going to be rough no matter who you're playing, and then you're playing two of the top three teams in the West. <laughs> On back to back, and if they leave it all, if they leave it all out on the table against Seattle and Wenatchee, what do they have left for Portland Everett? So yeah, like, after one day off, yeah, yeah, um, it's not gonna. It's definitely not gonna get any easier. No, you can't take you can't st- take Seattle for granted either. They no. they just lost to Everett three one tonight. Yeah, that's not so a bad game. You yeah. you can't take anything for granted. Yeah, Kamloops has been on a little bit of a hot streak lately. They're six and four in their past ten, so they've jumped Seattle. So Seattle is the bottom team, but I mean, the Pats struggle with bottom teams, aka Edmonton. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, see what happens, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so I guess for those games, Wednesday and or no, sorry, yeah, Wednesdays and Fridays games, Access is doing the game, so we'll be on. We'll be doing the panel again. Yay! Like we, like we did earlier in the season, so I think we got ballsy and you you did you did earlier right did yeah you weren't season. there that one so oh. I think we got ballsy and Drew Posty jumping on with us this time that's so. what it sounds like yep so it should be a fun time anyways yeah hopefully the games are decent um so <laughs> yeah if if hopefully. you were if you were kind of taken aback by the Spokane Camarango and if you haven't watched a game in Wenatchee well yeah you Spokane's good compared to Wenatchee so yeah it's going to be an interesting watch um it's basically in the rafters overhead view almost and you you can't read any name or number it's and it's, small. it's it's and it's pretty dark too like the the rink is fairly dark too so yeah it doesn't help gonna, it's going to be an interesting watch but uh it is what it is um yeah yeah all right. Uh, what else you got? Uh, that's yeah. pretty much it, I think. There's it's only those two games. I know, right? You got any players to highlight for the from this these two games? Um, I'm gonna say Ty Spencer scoring goals. Yeah. Nice. It's it's like like you said. It's it's hard to really watch like like this last yeah. one. It was hard to really tell who was who. Like it was, it was yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And like I said, I think Elman had a good game because I meant, you know, he had two clear, really good scoring chances. And it's like, okay, what else did he do out there? I don't know because I couldn't tell, right? So, yeah. But uh, you know, I heard Temple's name a few cha- a few times out there. He was, it was interesting. They had him lining up at center with Rowan out there, and Rowan's, you know, a really good faceoff guy. So it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, you know, you kind of think you'd have the the older guy play center, be the more defensive responsibility kind of situation, but not that I'm not saying that Temple can't play that, but you know, free him up, put him on the wing, kind of free him up and let him, you know, try to create some offensive opportunities, right? Rather than trying to focus on the defensive game. I don't know. That's I'm no coach, but how about let him play? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Does it matter what position? Just let him play. Just yeah. If he makes mistakes, let him yeah. play. No, for keep sure. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. So, but yeah, I don't know. This will be a quicker show. We're not gonna bore you with an hour worth of stuff, but we do have another great interview. Zane Rowan here. Um, kind of just the way it's worked. You know, we've talked to the older guys, all three alternate captains. Um, but you know, obviously the the older guys are are the ones that you know have a little more story to tell, a little better storytellers um but another another interview that went real well right oh yeah for sure it was nice talking nice sitting down talking to him yeah get to get to know him a little more so yeah so uh yeah we got a little 15 minute interview with him that we'll we'll put in here and uh you can listen to that 
All right, we're pleased to welcome on uh, number 25 in Regina Pats, Zane Rowan. Welcome, Zane. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, just a little little sit down here. We've been kind of getting on a few for you guys and uh, just kind of start off with you, you're born in, it says you're born in Torrance. Or yeah, you I was born in San Monica originally, so moved to Torrance when I was probably three or four, so that's where I, I mainstay. But um, yeah, I was born in Santa Monica, so. Cool, that's where you grew up in Torrance? Yeah, Torrance, yeah. So I moved away from home at, at 15 to go play at Delta in Vancouver, but had been there the, the entire time before that, so. What was hockey like growing up in California? Uh, it was good. Um, th they, you know, the Kings were starting to win their cups and everything, so it was really starting to boom, um, you know, youth hockey and everything. And um, after Gretzky being there and, and everything too, um, there was a lot, a lot of opportunity for hockey players and stuff down there. And um, you know, it's a really nice spot, and a lot of a lot of Kings players kind of stick around there and kind of help out the the youth hockey movement down there so um, yeah it was really it was really a great experience I was there and I was in Bay Harbor the Red Wings that was my first kind of Adam Squirt team whatever you would call it um, and then uh, I moved my way to the Junior Ducks and then the Junior Kings and then was there until I, I moved up here so so was hockey your first sport did you play anything else besides uh, hockey? yeah I I played hockey that was the only sport I really like um, played played um, I liked going to baseball games and stuff with my dad and um, play a lot of basketball in, in school and stuff but nice. hockey was the only like organized sport that I played so uh, family you have any other siblings yeah I have two sisters and a brother um, they, they into sports uh, it, my sister was a track star in high school but uh, she got hurt and kind of didn't really go that route but um, yeah she played track and then my uh, my brother he was a football player in Pennsylvania and he played uh, division three so um, but I'm the first hockey player in the family so um, yeah and then Gigi didn't really play anything else that was my other sister so <laughs> yeah yeah what does what your extended family think of you playing hockey coming up to Canada playing hockey especially in Canada yeah uh, no, <laughs> they're they're cool about it uh, they actually got to come up this past weekend uh, or a couple weekends ago for uh, family weekend and stuff and both my sisters and my niece and my mom were there so it was pretty cool to have them and uh, have them up here and come and watch and stuff but uh, yeah it's kind of just been my thing ever since I was little my dad was a huge Kings fan growing up so he just kind of um, put me onto that. Um, he was a he was a rock band drummer back in the day, so he wasn't the the hockey guy, but he was a Kings fan. So um, I think they they got me a, a drum set and like a mini net and stick, and I only touched the stick in the mini net. So you know how it goes. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much how it went. So your dad was a Kings fan. Does that make you a Kings fan? Oh yeah, yeah, huge Kings fan. Still a Kings fan? Uh, yeah, right now, yeah. Um, I like to say I'm a little bit of Blackhawks fan too. I watch watch a lot of Connors games and stuff still. But <laughs> of uh, course, right. Fair. yeah, growing up, that they were my uh, they were my team, and Kopitar was always my favorite player. So that was our next question. Yeah, right? yeah. So yeah, Kopitar was always my guy. Um, yeah, I watch. I try and kind of emulate my game after him a little bit. So um, you know, two way forward, but. Uh, um, yeah, he was he was a it was a fun time to watch the Kings through that those cup runs and everything like that. So, Definitely. yeah. How much did you know about the CHL and WHL? Uh, I didn't know a whole lot. Um, they had a the Pats had a scout down in in California, and I made my first AAA team my second year Bantam. So I was kind of a late bloomer, I guess you would say. And then uh, um, he kind of you know, told me about the league and how his experience was as Tommy Tartaglioni. And, um, uh, you know, he, I think he was a pretty popular player or goalie here at one point. People so loved him. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, he kind of, you know, talked to me. We had a tournament up in Abbotsford, my, my second year Bantam, and they kind of saw me and wanted uh, Tommy to reach out to me and stuff. And uh, it kind of started from there. So, and then here we are now. So it's pretty cool. Nice. Were there any other teams that kind of talked to you? You don't need to name names. Yeah, I think there was a couple, yeah. Um, but usually with the U.S. teams, it wasn't – or U.S. guys, it wasn't a – you know, they're, they're thinking you're going college usually. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the Pats were, you know, they told me how it was going to be, and I really liked uh, everyone here and the, the staff and everything, and I thought I could have a really good opportunity up here. So, Speaking of college, did you ever think maybe that – was the way you're gonna go? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it was kind of fifty-fifty. Um, I don't, I don't. I was kind of leaning more towards up here because I wanted the pro, the pro aspect for sure. And um, yeah, I just uh, they kind of were the the Pats were the first 
team to kind of talk to me, and I kind of fell in love with the idea of playing here. So um, I got really lucky. Yeah. Um, have you always been a forward? You play yeah. Uh, I forward? think I played defense for two weeks in Pee Wee and cried to my coach about how I wanted to play forward because I was never scrapped on the pads. Uh, no, I never did. No, yeah, that wasn't for me. So, um, yeah, I was. I played defense for two weeks and had a fit about it to my coach, and he moved me back to forward. <laughs> so, I guess it kind of worked out. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, always forward. So what was the transition like to come to Canada from California, especially to Regina, where it's sometimes it's minus two to minus 40 in a day? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, it was a little different at first. I, uh, Like I said, I went to Delta in Vancouver my first year midget. That's not like here, obviously, but got got a little bit of a taste of, you know, being away from home and um, the colder weather, I guess. And then. Uh, my 16 year, I went to Sioux Falls, so I would say that's pretty close to here in terms of the weather and stuff. Not as not as windy and not as brisk, I would say, but uh, yeah, I, I'd say I'm pretty used to it now. Um, but it's always nice to go home and go to the beach and stuff for sure. That Sioux Falls trip, that was because of COVID, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking about going back to Delta, and it was just kind of really hard being American and stuff, you know, with the visas and whatnot. And um, border. yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, I. Luckily, you know, Sioux Falls kind of came in, in in the last minute, and um, Noelle Needham, she, she's an amazing person in my life, and um, she's an amazing person in hockey, one of the first uh, female scouts in the NHL, and she was the, the GM of the Steel at one point. Um, but, yeah, she's been amazing to me and really furthered my game, and um, it was a great decision to go there. So Yeah, and then you're always coming back to Regina after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah. Is there any particular reason for number 25, or is it just one of those? Uh, no, I got thrown that in camp, and it kind of was just, it was in my stall, and that's what it was, so, um, you know, but I learned to love it, uh, so, yeah, it was, it's pretty cool, yeah. Do you, do you prefer the traditional blue and white jerseys, or the alternate red and whites? Uh, I don't know, I kind of like the, the blues, yeah. Um, the reds are really nice, too, but I don't know, I like, the, the blues are sleek, I think, so. What are you guys' favorites, do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm I a traditionalist. Like, yeah? I like, I like alternates. Yeah. So. You like the alternates? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The other ones are fine. Yeah. Well. Yeah. How did it feel getting an A this year? Yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing honor. You know, I've been here for, for three years and, um, you know, w grown as a person and as a player. And, um, you know, to have that vote of confidence from the coaching staff and from everybody, it's uh, it, it meant the world to me. So, um, you know, um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. So, what's uh, your summer kind of off ice hobby hobbies? Um, I don't know. I'm usually going to the beach and kind of just hanging out with friends and stuff. Uh, you know, I'll go for runs and and whatever. I'm not much of a golfer. Um, the guys will will <laughs> will tell you that for sure. I'm really bad at golfing, so. Um, yeah, they, they kind of get mad at me because they're like, you're living in California and you don't golf. Like, what's up with that? But uh, I watch it occasionally, and um, I'll go with the guys if they go out. But, uh, yeah, I'm usually, at, you know, at the beach or working out or, you know, working too. So, yeah, not a whole lot of time. So I understand you spent most of uh, last summer in Canada. I did, yeah. Yeah, I was with uh, Parker Berg at his place for, I think, the entirety of August and then a little bit of July as well. So that was good. Their their family is amazing and um, they're they're super close to me and you know, nice. th they're amazing. So just decided to stick around here for a while. Uh yeah I mean uh, I was in Edmonton oh, yeah. so um, but yeah I mean I I've made so many friends up here and stuff and um, this league so connected and and everything so uh, yeah I mean um, it was it was cool I I got to meet a lot of new people and learn a lot new things about Canada and stuff in Edmonton and kind of spending you know time outside of the rink and in, in a in a place I guess because we don't get a whole lot to to you know kind of travel around here so did you go anywhere cool um 
Not really. I mean, we kind of just hung out in Edmonton, I guess. We there is a there's an overlook. I forget what it's called, but there's kind of an overlook on the whole river right there, and I forget what it's called. But uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Bergie took me there, and um, there's some cool restaurants and stuff that we went to. But uh, besides that, not not a whole lot going on. Hit the mall, obviously. Yeah, the mall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess that too. Yeah. So, do you have any pregame superstitions? Uh, I used to have a lot. Um, not superstition, but kind of routines, I guess. And uh, yeah, I mean, I still kind of do. I do the same kind of thing every every time. I wouldn't say they're superstitions because if it doesn't, like, if I can't do it at the right time, I won't like have a fit about it or anything. But uh, you know, me me and Connor used to have a, a whole lot. Like, we'd kind of go through this this whole kind of dance routine sort of thing, I guess. Not not dance routine, but kind of like the same thing over and over and over. And it was at the same time and. Um, I'd say he's a little more superstitious than I was, but yeah, me and Barney have some, and me and Berg had some as well. So, yeah. What about intermission? Do, you do anything special there? No, I just try to drink a, like a kind of a, a glass of water and try and rehydrate and settle down. Um, usually, me and Vonner are talking about the the period before and kind of running it down, but just normal things, I guess. Do you have a pregame go-to meal? Yeah, chicken and pasta. Chicken I'd say everyone's usually that, or chicken and rice, something yeah. like that. So um, can't really go wrong with that. How do you tape your stick? Heel to toe, toe to heel? Uh, it kind of depends. I'll usually go heel to toe now. Um, I just switched to black tape a couple games ago as well. So, um, But, uh, yeah, I, I just think I went toe to heel for the start of the year, and I, didn't, I couldn't score for however many games, so I changed yeah. it up, and I think I scored that night. So... Um, yeah, I think I've been going heel to toe since, but I don't really have a whole lot of a preference. Whatever works. Like yeah, exactly. Well, what are you doing on the bus? What's your favorite kind of activity there? Uh, usually watch a movie with Barney. He's my seatmate, so uh, we'll we'll download some some movies on Netflix and kind of lay back and and relax. And then uh, usually we play a little bit of cards with the guys as well and kind of talk and. We have some fun on the bus, so, <laughs> yeah. Chase the Aces, here's the hot thing right yeah, now. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> Chase the Aces is the thing. It gets pretty, gets pretty rowdy on the bus for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, all in all in good time, I guess. <laughs> it's better with more people, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. It gets pretty, pretty <laughs> loud in the back of the bus for sure. Speaking of movies, what movies are your go-tos? Like, do you have a favorite movie or uh, a TV show that you watch all the time? Not really. I kind of try and... I don't really like watching the same stuff over and over. Like, I won't binge watch the same show twice, I don't think. But uh, right now I'm watching, like, House MD. I don't know if you guys have heard of that one. I, that's a pretty old one, I guess. Or older. Not uh, not super old, but, um, yeah, I guess uh, that's my thing right now. But favorite movie? I don't know. I usually go for the, the comedies, you know, like Step Brother. That's a pretty common answer, I guess. It's a classic, though, or... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Me and, me and the Vaughn twins always pull out some, some quotes from comedy movies, for sure. And Barney as well, so. Uh, music, what kind of music are you into? I'm into everything. Um, my dad, you know, he was, you know, drummer and stuff, so I get to grow up on the whole rock scene and all that type of stuff. Uh, but I, I like everything. I'll go rap. I'll, I started liking country because I'm up here now. I didn't really like country before, so kind of had to start to like it. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, rap country, rock, uh, EDM, that type of stuff. So, yeah, I'm all over the map. Who was picking the music before the game today? Because it was country for the first time in a long time. Uh, Hainsey, I think. He was on the outside one. So, yeah, Tabor, Alberta. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm usually the DJ most of the time in the room, but he'll grab the speaker outside while we're playing Super Bowl and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I think Morrissey was on it today. So kind of bounces around. There's not a, there's not a designated person right now. Your first career goal, going back to that, yeah. how special was that for you? Yeah, it was super special, um, you know, playing against my, my best friend's old team and stuff that passed away and, um, you know, getting that one off the skate, I kind of looked up to him for that one and, um, you know, couldn't kind of uh, ask for a better story on that goal and, um, yeah, I was trying to pass it over to Valley, if I remember correctly, and it just went off the guy's skate, went over the guy's shoulder, so, um, yeah, that was that was amazing for sure. So once you're done hockey, whenever that is, yeah. How, what do you see yourself doing? Like what, what, like what kind of career do you see yourself after hockey? Once hockey's done, yeah. However far that goes. Yeah. Um. I don't know right now. I'm kind of still trying to figure that out. You know. I guess everyone my age is still trying to kind of figure that out. But 
something, I don't know, I'm more of a physical person, I guess, so something physical and, um, you know, I'd like to stay in hockey as much, as long as possible for sure. Totally so get that, yep. yeah. 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 Thanks a lot yeah. for coming on. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, yeah. guys. All right. Yeah, that was great. Um, yeah. Closing thoughts. You got anything else? Um, four games. Pretty much every game now is must win. I don't see them winning all four, but at least they gotta they gotta play hard. Maybe try to pull out a W in Seattle. Maybe get a W in Wenatchee, and then go from there. But time's running out. That's all I can say. It's unfortunate, but time is running out. It is what it is. We kind of expected it when they decided to go do what they're doing, like the rebuild. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, you trade away, you know, your best defenseman and a top three forward. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't expect and, the team to be as good as they were before when you, you move those guys. But And even if they would have kept those guys, where would they be? Like, how much difference would it be? Like, that's that's the whole thing. Like Exactly, right? You know, okay, you got Val still here. So is Spencer and Aremba getting a little less ice and them not scoring? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like, everything. All is what. I don't. Wa- I don't want to say you're miss not missing Vallis, but those guys have really stepped up. Like uh, Aremba's. What has he got? Twelve goals in the last like twenty five games. Like, Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like he He's had come eight, on a lot lately. Yeah, he had eight in the first. You know, thirty games. Right. So, and Spencer's really been hot, obviously, since kind of the Christmas break and stuff. So those guys have taken their step. Um. Yeah, you're not getting as much offense from the back end with Berg gone, but I mean, it is what it is. You can't, you can't. I don't know. Just ride it out. You 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 gotta you gotta make plans for the future, right? So exactly, yeah. So or else it's just the endless mediocrity, right? You don't want to see that. You want to see. You gotta you gotta take some pain. To, the gain in the future right so exactly it's, it's, yeah. it's just unfortunate it's kind of just been middling for the last five years yep yep that's, that's since the, the memorial cup year it's just kind of exactly it's just been middling right they've been there that's it and i mean i don't want to blame it on this but i mean it's kind of bedard threw a wrench into that right like the bedard the bedard pain but the badar fun it was it was fun having him here oh, but it was unreal. painful that they couldn't actually do a proper rebuild when they had the perfect chance i'm not even talking about trading him or not it's just yeah, yeah. it was just before him right it's like, just like the, the timing down. of having the timing just sucked yeah it was nice having him here but the timing sucked yeah right because that's the point where you're gonna start to rebuild actual rebuild yeah. and then you just can't do that when he comes in. It's like, okay, well, nope. we just gotta, we just gotta do something to, to be decent. And then they did. Yeah. And yeah. So, but yeah, no, I wouldn't have traded for anything. No. So, <laughs> anyways. Exactly. Anyways, well, we should get out of here. Um, yeah, four games this week, so I have less to talk about. Hopefully, some some good stuff. Hopefully. Positives. <laughs> we'll, we'll look. Yeah. For, we'll look for as many positives as, as possible. And we'll if 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 not, we'll still we'll chat about uh, our access time. Yeah. Go from there. Yeah, definitely. So, but yeah, we'll get out of here and, uh, yeah, catch us on Access. Uh, games will be on CHL Live too. You've got your subscription. And yeah, hopefully there's some good ones. So, talk to you guys later. Have a good one.